We're going to bring Danny O'Brien out. He's our senior fellow at Filecoin Foundation. And he's going to lead an interactive conversation. We're trying to figure out, we want to make connections here. We want to know what you're working on, what you're building, what you need to build to make those projects a reality, and try and do some networking, pairing in real time. And then we can keep the conversations going. Um, we're going to take a short break after this. So as we set you up into small groups, you can grab a drink and, and keep working together. So thank you, and welcome Danny. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Danny O'Brien. I'm a senior fellow at the Falcon Foundation. Senior fellow is Latin for old man. And uh, my primary job at the Falcon Foundation, as people who work there will, will know to their pain, is to tell old and slightly convoluted anecdotes that shine a light on what's happening at the moment. Um, and one of the, I used to be a journalist, and I covered like, quite a few of these boom and bust moments in the rise of technolog technologies that transform the world. Um, and one of the things that, that I'm constantly reminded at events like this, and uh, particularly yesterday, actually, we had the Falcon Plus and storage providers uh, meet up. And so this was one of the first times that I've been able to sort of see the, the very heart of the Falcon ecosystem. And I always... I, and it's, it's kind of fascinating, right? Because I think uh, everybody here knows that one of the driving aspects of what we're building here is uh, an incentive-driven system that we, we tend to explain to the outside world as being creating a very uh, competitive market for storage. That's one of the reasons why um, the network is decentralized, because people can come into it very easily. And it's also uh, one of the reasons why the price is so... Um, unparalleledly low. Um, but I think that really gives like the wrong um, impression um, of, of, of what it feels like to be within this, this culture and this moment. And I think it, it, it harkens back to some of the, the moments that I've seen talking to people at the very beginning of various sort of other transformative, disruptive revolutions before now. I've been very lucky um, to spend a fair bit of time and I hope he doesn't mind me plucking his name and using it in vain in this way, with uh, Lee Felsenstein. Does anybody know who Lee Felsenstein is? Interesting. So you should look up Lee Felsenstein on Wikipedia. So Lee Felsenstein has two, no, three, no, four, no, maybe five claims to fame. Lee Felsenstein um, invented the first consumer-level modem, the device that you use to plug in to connect to... Well, not in those times, actually, to connect to kind of local, local systems, but over the phone line. He also was the person who designed on his kitchen table um, what was, in, in many ways, the first laptop, the uh, Osborne One. So, uh, an incredible um, hardware engineer. But for these purposes, um, there are two other things that, that Lee Felsenstein did that were kind of pivotal. Um, one is that he was a lead person in the Berkeley free speech movement. So if you've ever thought that the internet and microcomputing and co the computing, personal computing revolution um, had a powerful effect on free expression in the world, it's probably down to the fact that, that Lee Felsenstein had a role in both of those. But the final point, and this is, told you it would be a long anecdote, the final point that kind of connects Lee to what you see now is Lee uh, co-founded and ran something called the Homebrew Computer Club. Who here knows the Homebrew Computer Club? But yeah, okay, so now you know who Lee Felsenstein is. And so when I talked to him, I said, look, Lee, what the Homebrew Computer Club is most famous for basically being the engine, the communal engine in Silicon Valley that created many of the basic products that fueled the computer, personal computer revolution. Most notoriously, um, it's the place, it was, it was literally run out of somebody's garage for many years, um, where Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs met for the first time. And um, they're not the kind of people that you would imagine bumping into one another in any other context. Um, but uh, I asked Lee, like, okay, how did that happen? And he sort of ex explained one thing that I won't put words into his mouth, right? But the other one is very sort of practical and points to what we're going to do now. So the first one is he sort of talked about the 
the, the vibe, as the younger than me people would say, um, in the Homebrew Computer Club. And when you have a moment where like, there's a huge amount of incredible opportunity and a kind of open field for development, where every kind of idea is novel and new because you suddenly have the ability to implement that technology um, or implement that in new technology for the very first time, um, it, it, it's, it's a market. It's an open market, it's an open ecosystem. It's obviously sort of a competitive market, right? With, with definitively low prices that will transform um, the reach of this new technology. But it's also an incredibly cooperative market, right? It's co-opetition, right? Because it's so wide and it's so, um, it, it, there's so much opportunity and there's so few people that really understand and get what's going on, you end up working together. So in the Homebrew Computer Club were some of like the key founders of which the, the, the industries um, and companies that it, to most people's mind would be kind of competitors, right? But at that point and at that moment, as the explosion began, they were all cooperating together. They would work, they would exchange code, they would exchange hardware ideas. Someone would say, hey, I'm too busy to work on this, but this is a really good idea. Why don't you, why don't you do this? Like, here is a, something that we're capable of doing. Perhaps we can work with you. And um, the only person actually, historically, that seemed to be a bit upset about this um, was Bill Gates because Bill Gates actually wrote a memo to the Homebrew Computer Club um, and other hobbyist clubs going, can you stop copying our stuff? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my own thing here up in, uh, up in New Mexico. Um, but it's those moments, right? And I saw that yesterday where we have uh, all the storage providers working together to solve problems and cooperate uh, and um, fill in new opportunities in that space to create a bigger and better Filecoin ecosystem um, because it helps everyone. And also, it's kind of what we made this to be, right? The way that the Filecoin ecosystem is designed to be is to sort of suck in data, suck in opportunity, and uh, uh, benefit everybody, not by having a sort of zero-sum game where everyone's trying to eat each other's lunch, but expand the whole, the whole pie. Okay, the other thing that Lee taught me, and I wish I had the physical prop, is I said, literally, how did you do it, Lee? How did this work? And he said, I would go to the front of the room with a microphone, and I would have, I don't have this, he would have a huge ruler, like one of those big kind of engineering rulers. And then people would, he would say, okay, stand up, someone who needs something, is doing something, or would like to do something, and then he would point to them with this giant stick. Presumably it's a garage, so he could probably touch them like the finger of God. Um, and they would stand up and explain, explain what they were doing. As I said, they wouldn't let me bring a giant stick to wield into this space. And it's probably a bad idea in the moment. But I've got the next best technological thing, which um, I've asked a, a couple of our awesome hosts to um, grab some microphones and uh, go into the audience. And what I'm going to ask now is that if you have a brilliant idea, if you are doing something that you feel the community should know about and would love to have either help or customers or beta testers or supporters. If you have something, some, some funds, right? If you're an investor and you are looking to speak to people here right now and invest in projects. If you are a developer and you're just like going, I am one of probably right now, one of the top 100 people who understands this ecosystem, and I would like to work on a new project. If you're any of those things or more, just stick your hand up, and we will, we will pick you out, and you will get like 30 seconds or, or a minute or two minutes to just explain what you would like to do. So this is the point when no one puts their hands up, or at least I can't see them if they do put their hands up. Okay, we have one person over there. Um, would somebody with a microphone like, go over and like chat to the person there? Hello. Um, please say your name, affiliation, and what you would like from the world. Great. Hi, everybody. My name is Stefano. Uh, I'm the head of platform at Longhash Ventures. Uh, Longhash cool. Ventures was founded in Singapore in 2018 as Asia's first uh, Web3 accelerator. 
uh, we're also one of the region's leading uh, Web3 VCs. And uh, we're a long-term partner of uh, Protocol Labs. Uh, we've been working together with them for a few years now. We are their go-to partner in Asia to build out the Filecoin ecosystem. And uh, I'm very excited to be here today with, with, you know, to meet and connect with builders. We're actually currently recruiting for our third Filecoin cohort accelerator. It's a 12-week structured program. You also get investments. Uh, it'll kick off uh, at the end of July, and we're taking applications until the end of June. So I uh, would love to meet with builders. Uh, come up to me. I'll be here all day uh, if you're interested in the program, if you want to ask questions. Uh, otherwise, you can go to our website, longhash.vc, uh, to find out more. Thank you. OK, longhash.vc. Round of applause for Stefano. Um, actually, you can also go and search on YouTube. I believe there are like videos of the, the last few accelerators. It was actually, I'm, I'm really glad you did this because this was my introduction to the amazing world of the Filecoin ecosystem. So I was like, OK, what's going on? Um, a year ago, I Googled and Juan Bonet um, gave an introduction to like, I think, was it that your first round of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were amazing projects. There was an amazing insurance project going on. Um, and as Stefano says, there's both investment and 12 weeks of, of training to get you up to speed with what the opportunities are. So thank you very much. All right. Are there other ha okay, there's a hand up over here. So can somebody come with a microphone? Hey, who are you? Actually, hey. could you come a little bit into the light, if only? Yeah, yeah. Which is what, what they say, they the say when you die, but it's also good in this setting. Okay. All right, thanks for the opportunity. My name is CB10. I'm the product manager at uh, Big Data Exchange. Uh, the website is bigd.exchange. We are a marketplace that matches storage provi providers with valuable data. Uh, it's an MVP stage right now. We are two weeks in. Uh, we've got 1.5 petabyte of data on it. Uh, what we need most now, right now, uh, is to have continuous feedback from clients, from storage providers, from notaries, so that we can make our product even better. Because like what Danny said, our goal is to make the pie even bigger so that it benefits all the participants in the Filecoin economy. Thank you. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, thank you, CB. So you may have already heard of Big Data Exchange. I've heard it mentioned at least a couple of times. It was mentioned in uh, Molly's presentation earlier. And also, I think Juan gave it a shout out at his AMA yesterday. Um, I don't know about you, but the hardest thing I find when I'm trying to talk to Filecoin about Filecoin, and I took generally, I work with nonprofits like folks like um, uh, Starling Labs and the Shoah Foundation, but I've been going out trying to bring public data onto the network. And the hardest thing is you say, okay, it costs about 10 grand to put uh, a petabyte of data um, for a month on Amazon. And uh, the going rate on the Filecoin network is about $2. Um, and, um, and actually, because you're public useful data, it's for free. And um, the effect I get is people just go, I, please get out of my house. I don't believe you. You are obviously a crazy man on the streets of San Francisco, which is a thing. Um, and often the crazy people on the streets of San Francisco have excellent pitches. So, um, but but the um, but the truth is, and this is why what's really exciting about big data um, uh, 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 exchange is that. Um, in some ways, we've kind of flipped the, the comparison that Juan used is it's like that moment where the price of oil not only went to zero during the beginning of COVID, but it actually turned negative. And suddenly people were paying to have people take their oil. And we're kind of in that situation now with the economics that we've got right now and the vast capacity of the Filecoin network. We actually are willing, storage providers are willing to bid for useful data that they can store and, uh, and will be able in the future to compute over and offer extra services. And so if you go to um, uh, um, CB's site, you will see that that's the bidding process that's going on. And until I'd seen that site for real, I hadn't even envisaged that this was a possible thing. So this is sort of the setting that we're in right now. Okay, so. Uh, do we have uh, anyone else with their hands up? Let we see. Can see anyone see anyone? Like, I can see people smiling and being shy, so you don't have to be shy. Right, OK. Um, it has been suggested to me that, that someone can come onto the stage. Luke, would you like to come onto the stage? I wouldn't dare. Luke, right? Yeah, OK, good. My, my ah, thank you, Danny. 
How are you? I'm doing all right. Thank you. Um, I've just been hanging out. Um, <laughs> the, the latest thing I've been working on is this pitch session thing. It's going I don't great. Know. Yeah, yeah. I think, really I think it's going pretty well. Yeah. Anyway, what are you up to these days? Everyone, my name's Luke. I'm with the Open Forest Protocol. We are driving financing to forest projects by creating natively on-chain uh, monitoring, reporting, and verification. So basically impact investing for nature-based climate solutions. So if you have a forest or you know people who have a forest that needs financing or you want to invest in forests and um, all that good stuff within the crypto ecosystem, then yeah, let me know or so just talk about it. So when you say forest, you mean a literal forest, a right? Literal this isn't forest, like, yeah. you know, a dag tree. Forest, no, I, right? This is plants. Yes. I mean, okay. I, the IPCC reports say we need to draw down like 5 gigatons, big Gs of carbon from the atmosphere every single year. Forests are really good at doing that. They also have little animals that grow in them, so that's kind of cool. Good for biodiversity. <laughs> um, but yeah, the carbon sequestration is the main thing and reducing the greenhouse gases that are in the atmosphere at carbon pool is a good thing, I've heard. That's fantastic. And if people would want to get in touch with you to help out with this project, where's the best place to reach you? That is a good question. Openforestprotocol.org. Uh, we got a little intake form, or you can hit me up. I'll be sitting over there. But yeah, openforestprotocol.org. Excellent. Thank you very much, Luke. Thanks, you Danny. Step down. Okay. Round of applause for Luke. So we had CBT, we had Stefano, we had Luke. Is there anyone else out here who would like to make a pitch or announce their thing or was planning to do something all along but couldn't get space in the schedule? Can I see anyone else? Do we have any folks from... I can't see a thing, so other people will have to be my guided, my guided light on this. Do we have anything from the Radius people? Tabitha, are you out there? All right, okay. Is there anyone else? Oh, I see somebody over there. Like, yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. No? I think it just hey. worked. Yes. Oh. Hey, Danny, did you want to tell people about FFDW's RFP opportunity? Yes. I <laughs> well, okay, the tables are turned. This is like someone telling me that I should pitch the thing that I work on. Yes, that's actually an excellent idea. Bryn? And if I spotted it was you, I would have probably remembered before. So, uh, one of the hats I wear at the Falcoin Foundation is that I work um, with Bryn and an amazing team of uh, non-profit um, uh, uh, grant makers and uh, partnership collaborators to bring public data onto the network, but basically to build a digital library for the future. The Falcon Foundation for the Decentralized Web's mission is to um, support open protocols and open source systems and education in order to create a permanent repository of the world's most important information. Um, it's connected to Falcoin in the sense that we clearly think that Filecoin is an, a, a, a decentralized web storage is an important part of that, but we have a bigger vision than that. And part of that vision involves supporting um, training, uh, involves supporting education, and it's support, it supporting what we call GLAM, which is galleries, libraries, archivists, and museums. Um, to digitize their data. Uh, and we want to support people building the protocols and tools that make it easier for people to permanently store a digital record of humanity's most important information. It sounds very exciting, and you, yes, you can help. If you go to ffdweb.org slash awards, um, we actually currently have what we call in the nonprofit space an RFP which is a request for proposals. And if you think, or you, more importantly, if you know someone in, um, uh, that maybe doesn't know about Filecoin or doesn't know about the opportunities that are going on now in a museum um, or um, a, an archiving world or um, in the educational space, uh, then they can apply for funding there. And we're giving away, how much are we giving away, Bryn? Yeah, I would say two, two, to, two to three um, a million dollars I mean, um, in partnership agreements to help put that data on. So that's ffdweb.org slash awards. Um, and uh, feel free to go there. The applications are due by uh, June 23rd. So thank you, Bryn, for reminding me about that. Um, 
Is that Tabitha? Do I see? No, okay. I thought I saw someone over there. Um, okay, is there anybody else who is looking to supply funding um, or provide support or is a developer who's interested in a project or is just somebody who feels that this is the moment where um, they can let people know in the Filecoin community um, what they're doing and how they would like to help? Yes! Over here. Um, do we have a secondary microphone? And you're welcome to come onto the stage. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, I spoke a little bit earlier at the cafe stage about Radius, which is a, um, the first of many products that Tefra Labs is building to help build the infrastructure to make the future of work easier for everybody. Um, currently, we have services for both funders and workers. So um, if you are interested, please visit us at radius.space. Um, right now, it is a decentralized job board for Web3 positions, um, and we have support for funders. Um, we can help you write grants, help you structure them. And for workers, um, like Danny was saying earlier, it's about learning, trade, and really how we can train you to be the best contributor to the Web3 ecosystem. So um, I'm here around, so if you have any questions, please come find me and um, give us a follow on Twitter at at join radius and um, our app is app.radius.space. Um, so yeah, thank you for giving me this time. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thanks a lot. Isabel. So we think radius.space is a super important resource because one of the things that we're going to have to do is to reach out to a wider audience and bring them in. Um, and uh, definitely I heard um, uh, uh, the, the radius speech earlier on, and one of the things I drew from that is, you know, it's often a challenge to bring in um, uh, folks into this space and find them. And it's going to be an excellent tool and a repository for seeking out the people that you need to build uh, your company, your project, or your uh, communal work. Okay, so we're, we're almost uh, sort of at the end of our session, but I do want to give um, anybody else who would like to just come up and give a 30-second pitch on uh, what they would uh, like to do. Are there any more takers? Okay. Okay, going once. Going twice. All right, well, thank you very much for this little uh, foray into what's going on. Don't feel that you need to have a centralized intermediary like me to um, help you have these conversations. Um, I think we've designed this whole event so that you have the capability to just strike up a conversation with, uh, with anyone that you have here. And I'm pretty sure that the opportunities and the friendships that you'll make here will enable you to build a revolution as powerful, as universal, and as good for society as the one that was built in the Homebrew Computer Club. Um, so thank you very much, and um, feel free. I think we have a break now, and, uh, and come back at the break for uh, even more great uh, talks here on the main stage. Thank you very much. We'll do right. one more, I think. Just